for those of you who are watching, if you haven't signed up for Kalingo yet, try it out. One week free trial. Come join us. <laughs> yeah, that's the only advertisement you're going to get. Anderson. Hi, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. How have you been? I've been good. Yeah? Hi, Cecilia. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I apologize for being late. That's, it's okay. It's only 6.02 or 7.02. Oh, yeah. 7.03 for me, and I'm coming from Alan's class. That's why I'm late. Ah, so what, what happened in Alan's class today? We had uh, three kinds of future tense, and it was very basic. It was level 200. Level it was 200. very, very, yes, very simple class, but ah. we had great fun. We had Good. great fun. Well, that's <laughs> the, I think they're experimenting with maybe adding some more classes. What's uh what's today's level? Hmm. Three hundred. Today's three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three hundred. Very good. <laughs> well, anyway. So Anderson, I haven't seen you for a few days. So tell me, what's uh what's been going on with you? What's new? Oh yes, I, I was in some trouble. Uh, uh -oh. To solve. But uh, it's okay for now. Okay. You don't want to explain, do you? <laughs> Uh, no, I I I I work um, in my uh, free hours. I work with my wife in a in sell uh, um, blinds. Do you know blinds? Oh. And, and then uh, we was uh, a meeting with um, um, a supplier. Okay. Very good. A little bit of work. Is that your you you guys own this little small company, or you work for someone else? Yes, we have a small company. We we work from the the our house, um, office in a house, something like this. Okay, you work from the house. What what else did you say? Uh, uh we uh, our office is in my in our house. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Yeah, hey, home home based businesses are very common probably all over the world, right? Yes. Very good. Hello Osama. Hello Sura. How are you guys doing? Connection problems, hopefully not. I can't see your uh, avatars anymore. Let me just type something. So Cecilia, what's uh, what's new with you? I think we missed you yesterday. Yes, the point is I can't join uh, at this time because I have to go to my institute to study to become a teacher. Ah. Today my teachers are on a meeting called Asamblea Tecnico Docente mm. that they meet twice a year to discuss on technical issues and that's why today I can attend. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's like teacher conference day. <laughs> yes, teacher's <clears throat> conference day. It's just like being back in school again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, Osama, hello. I guess you can hear me. All right, well, if, if you get your microphone working, We'll chit chat a little bit. Anderson, how's the studying going for the um, the big test next year? 
Oh, I, I am studying. Uh, I study a lot in the free time. But I, I didn't have uh, um, some uh, too much free time. <laughs> yeah. Is it hard to study for something that's so far away? No, I, I think uh, you have a time to be best uh, prepared. Okay. Just a slow and there's a there's an expression that says slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> yeah. The hair, the hair and the tortoise. The hair and the tortoise. You got it. You got it. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit here. Um, let's warm up. <clears throat> um, ah, welcome, David. I think you're muted. Your your microphone is. Nice to see you. Can you hear me? I'll tell him. Okay, while he's figuring out his microphone, let's let's warm up a little bit. Um, Anderson, how would you describe your TV viewing habits? Um. Uh. I don't uh, uh, watch TV for a, a long time. I think it, I, I watch TV for one hour in a day. Okay. So on on a typical day, on a typical day you watch only one uh, hour. Um, uh, in the maximum. In the what? I don't know how to say. Uh, I gotta make a note here. <clears throat> what were you trying to say? We'll, we can help you with it. Um, let me see. Uh, the major, the maximum time I watch TV is one hour. Okay, the maximum time. Okay, very good. So, would you say I watch a lot of t TV? I watch a little TV. Uh, yes, I, I watch a little TV. I watch a little TV. Okay, good. So, just to qualify it, um, Cecilia, how would you describe your at your your typical TV viewing habits? Not more than Anderson. <laughs> um, uh, I, 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 sorry, is the teaching point a frequency adverbs? No, I just wanted to see what you what. Actually, I just uh, want to see what you guys naturally would say. Like, tell okay. me. Uh, I watch TV uh, as a somniferum. <laughs> Uh, I, it's on, uh, and I fall asleep. Ah. So I watch TV probably on the weekends. Uh, uh, a, a, a program that is uh, um, um, it's a, a group of women who interview uh, different personalities. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, David. Hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Italy, but actually I live in London. So it is my first day with uh, Colingo. Ah, uh, well, that's why. <laughs> welcome. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what, are you, what are you guys uh, talking about? Well, uh, we're just warming up. We are talking about TV, television, and mm -hmm. how would you describe your own television viewing habits? So if someone just said, hey, you know, compared to other people, or tell, tell us a little bit about how much TV do you watch, when do you watch, what do you watch? Okay, first of all, I have to say one thing. I don't have TV. <laughs> I stopped watching TV two years ago. Wow. And uh, yeah, because to be honest, I don't like to uh, watch things that I want to watch. I'm going to explain this. Uh, the TV, every time that you start watching TV, you, you don't have choice. They, mm -hmm. they, they, want to, uh, they want to 
watch what what what, you, what they want to see, watch to you. Um, uh, I don't know if you understand me, but you don't have choice. Yeah. To see what you want. Okay. Yeah, so that's why. Yeah, that's why I start watching TV because I don't like. So it's better. I mean, it's better if you have a PC and with a PC you can watch whatever you want. You can read whatever you want, and it's perfect. So you can uh, you can learn. I think better from the PC than from the television. Okay. So would you say you watch um, you watch content through the computer? You watch. Sorry. You watch some television shows through the computer, or you watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I usually watch television, a short TV or movie from mm. my computer, which is better. Uh, I, I prefer I, I prefer watching stuff from my PC than sure. from my television. Yeah, I actually. And how, how about how about you, Jeremy? Is it, your, is it yeah, you're Jeremy? How about uh -huh. you, Jeremy? What's your point uh... of view? I yeah I, I'm I'm watching more and more television through my computer because that way I yeah. can pick and choose what I want to watch. Yeah. And then of course uh, I watch the news through the internet as well. Um, how would you? How many hours? Uh, thinking about the hours in a day, would you say you watch an average amount of TV, a lot of TV, some TV? I don't watch. Uh, you know, uh, through the computer, through the computer, not necessarily yeah. just the broadcast. Uh, how many hours a day I watch to, or uh, I'm saying through the computer? You mean? Yeah, not necessarily a number, but how would you qualify? Do you think it's a lot, a little, some? No, ju just a little, because I don't have time to um, to stay and uh, enjoy my computer. Because to be honest, I, I like the te technology and the computers and all the all the things that is from the device. You know what I mean? And but I don't have too much time because I'm working every day. And this morning I supposed to be in my English lesson, but I wake up a little bit late, <laughs> so that's why I'm here. <laughs> Got it. Oh, okay. Well, nice to have you with us. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, by the way, what are you doing in London? I moved to London nine months ago for okay. improve my English and you know start a new life. I'm 22 years old. And I'm planning to take certificate. I don't know if you know uh, the ESL certification, certificate like uh, fresh certificate, advanced certificate. Because mm -hmm. I'm planning to start university in the next year, maybe. So that's why I'm studying. Okay. Uh, and I came here in London. And at the same time, I'm trying to improve my job skills. Because mm -hmm. I'm working at a luxury hotel, like a, like a waiter. But oh. um, I'm planning to do something properly. I don't want to say that a weight is not properly, but uh, I would like to, you know, push myself to the future. Sure. Do something properly for me, something that then makes me very happy, makes me happy and proud of me. That sounds good. Very good. Hello, <laughs> Ken. Yes, hello. How are you doing? Good are to you? see you again. Yes, good to see you again. Good. All right. Good. Oh, doing good. How would you how would you describe your your television viewing habits? Mm -hmm. Whether whether it's TV through the regular TV or mm -hmm. TV on the internet. How how would you describe your TV viewing habits? Yes, actually, I'm busy for attending class and chat on Skype, uh, and much more. And so I I don't have a time to watch TV. And you know, as a divide, uh, sorry, de divide, divide. Yeah, you know, so, mm -hmm. sorry for the name. I cannot pronounce. But yeah, says you know. I have, uh, you know, we have more option on the internet because TV sometimes uh, forced to viewers to, you know, unnecessary things. So I don't <laughs> want to, I want to watch the, you know, what I want. And sure. actually, only people began to broadcast on the internet. I, I usually watch this show, ordinary people show. It's not so can entertainment like TV, but uh, you know, it's. We can uh, chat uh, f uh, with other participants or uh, you know broadcaster by letter on te by text on that hmm. side. I like okay. yeah. So maybe these interaction uh, you know make me more kind of uh, how can I say make make me more uh, kind of entertaining entertain mm -hmm. entertain me or uh, you know it's kind of fun to join such an ordinary person broadcasting. With Interesting. Chatting some something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Okay. Thanks for sharing your observations, guys.
Mm -hmm. um, today we are going to talk about plurals and quantifiers. Some of you may have already gone through plurals, um, but we'll try to share some, some of the nuances or some of the finer points of pluralizing words, what kind of quantifiers we can use in front of our words so that we don't use the same expression over and over again. Have you noticed that sometimes when you're learning a new language, I know when I was, when I, well I'm still learning, but when I was brand new in Spanish, you fall in love with the same expressions over and over again because you learn a few things and so you just repeat them. <laughs> and so you have, I call them crutch words, where anything that you say, uh, like in Spanish, I have a friend, he says, um, what is the word he says? Entonces. Everything he says starts with entonces. Y entonces, y entonces. So we can do the same thing when it comes to our, our quantifiers. We might say a lot all the time, and a lot of this, and a lot of that, and a lot of this. But what we want to do is expand our vocabulary and use some of the different quantifiers. So we'll talk about that today. But before we, before we break down the grammar, uh, a quick pronunciation tip when it comes to the sounds of that English speakers make, right? Uh, what would you guys say is different about English vowel sounds compared to some other languages? What do you think, Cecilia? How does English vowel sounds, how do English vowel sounds compare to Spanish vowel sounds? Because in Spanish we only have five vowel sounds, like they are written. We mm -hmm. have five written vowels and we pronounce five sounds. Whether in English, uh, I have to go to my phonetic notes, <laughs> but you have five written, five written uh, sounds and five written uh, letters, but you have uh, how many sounds? Many more because yeah. also you have diphthongs, for instance, with the uh, vowels combinations. Yeah. And we don't. Uh, and there is something that is very hard for Spanish speakers that is the schwa. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it makes the in a in a speech in a sentence for instance all the words that are not called con content words they uh, go uh, softly in the pronunciation because mm -hmm. all the vowels all the vowels tend to be unstressed meaning that they go softly in the pronunciation because the vowels tend to be un non non pronounced Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Good good sound. Have you guys heard of the vowel sound schwa? Yes. Yeah. So it's that uh sound. It's it's the it's a vowel sound that it's not it doesn't correspond exactly to A, E, I, O, or U. It's it's an unstressed uh vowel. And without getting into the technical aspects any more than what Cecilia shared, which I thank you for that. Um today we're gonna focus just on the sound that we make because for a lot of people it's like when you learn as a child. You don't know all the rules of grammar, but when you learn as a child, you learn to listen for that sound, and so we, we naturally imitate it, whatever language we grow up in. So if, as you listen to native speakers, whether they're British or American, uh, <laughs> and we're getting, we're getting some more flavor on Kalingo, you may have noticed, I think we have, uh, well, isn't, isn't Alan based in, in London? No, in uh, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, yeah, that's right. He's in Northern Ireland. And then I think we have an Australian uh, teacher now, I don't yeah. attend their classes. Yes, uh, um, Robinson is his surname. Uh, I, I forgot his name, but uh, he's Robinson, his surname. He's going to come up later. I'll ah, tell you later. Good. And I love the Australian accent, by the way. Um, good day, Mike. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the sound of these two wor these these words. So what sound do we hear in... Uh, many, can. Any. Okay. A many, any. Yeah. So I would say if you were describing that sound, it's it's kind of like a eh, eh, eh. You know, it's difficult to put your exact definition on. You just have to listen for it. It's eh, many, any, eh, 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 right? Kind of like someone says, what did you think of the movie? I always like the idea of eh, eh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what if What if we were to change the two words to this? Much. David, some. What do you think, David? About uh, sorry, about much and some. 
Yes. So it's a different sound, isn't it? It's more of a uh sound instead of eh. One is the other one's many, any. The other one is uh, much, some. Much, some. Yeah, perfect. No, no absolutely no problem okay. there. Um, you know, Jeremy. Yes. Uh, the the pronunciation. It's not. It's now I told you I'm living here in London. It's a little bit different when we when you pronounce sure. the words. But you know, I I can. I find more easy to understand you than the British people here. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surprising. More yeah, clearly for me. I always tell. Um, well, hope maybe it's the microphone. I always tell people. Uh, <laughs> I know that the British have a different accent, and I'm not going to pretend that you know everything we say is the same. I'm going to tell you the way American English sounds in general. Even in America, it's a big country. Uh, we have a lot yeah. of regions. The sound that a New Yorker makes, someone from New York is very different than someone from California but uh, overall there is a there, there there are some general some general bound boundaries when it comes to our vowel sounds and then the British have a little bit I say sometimes it's crisper and they also stress the word differently two days ago I brought a um, English uh, test I mean English uh, like an example of a magazine okay a test. and uh, I remember that I brought center like C E N T E R E, and the teacher told me, "Wow, right, this is an American pronunciation. It's not English pronunciation because the proper pronunciation, I mean, for the English pronunciation is with E R at the end. Yeah. R, so R E. Center. Yeah. yeah. R E at the end. Yeah, that's British. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's just do a couple of pr quick practices to make sure that I think you guys won't have any problem with this. But um, Anderson, read me the sentence." I don't know many people who like reggae music. Yeah, good. Many people, no problem. And how about this one? Um, Cecilia. Joe was Joe was Joe Joe was hoping to win some money at at bingo. Good. Yeah, so all the different vowel sounds come into play there in that sentence, right? But we're focusing on the some money, okay? So just keep that, keep your ears open for the differences between the the, the, the vowel sounds. But everybody here is saying it without problem. So let's move on to the grammar. Okay, um, basic basic English pluralization, as with probably some some Latin based languages. How do we make a noun plural if it's a if it's a normal noun? What do we add to it? Yes. Had to have an yeah. S. And add, an, add an S, or in some cases we add what? S or? ES. ES, yeah. Add S or add ES, right? There's all sorts of examples we could give. We could go on and on. Uh, books. Give me, a, give me another noun that's plural that we, it's normal. What, what do you guys think? Books? Robbers. Robbers, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tables. What's that, Anderson? Tables. Tables. Yeah, we could go on and on, right? But let's let's focus yes. today on irregular irregular plurals. So yes. the ones uh, that finish in in ch, mm -hmm. in x, in x. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In some uh, of them anyway. What else? Maybe graffiti and graffito. Well, for instance, let's start with some basics. And this isn't necessarily irregular, but we want to learn the other rule. So, what do we do with a? Uh, what do we do with that word, David, to pluralize a fox? I'm sorry. How do we pluralize fox? E S at the end. Yeah, E S at the end. Okay, basic yeah. rule. It's a, it's a, it's a regular one, man. It's regular. Foxes. It's regular. Just want to. Some of them add S. Some of them add E S. Okay. Yeah. What happens? The good news is that some of the most common, uh, some of the more irregular words are also the more common words. I think they come from archaic English, right? They've been around for hundreds of years. So, the basic word like man, one man, two men, two men, right? Uh, one woman, two women, two women, two women. And it's interesting one that the. Child. The pronunciation, Sorry. the pronunciation for a woman and women is different. Yeah. Man yes. and men, woman and women. So we actually okay. changed, the, we changed the the vowel sound in the beginning of the word too, which is unusual. Yes. Um, Cecilia, Child. 
One child, child and children. Good. Kids uh, and, and kittens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about uh, Anderson? One person? Two persons. No. Two no. people. People. People is actually the plural of person. There are situations in English, to be fair, that you can say persons. There are there are there are situations, but in general, if we're talking about a group, we want to say people. That is the plural. Okay, thank you. I'll let, and I'll we let, go ahead. Sorry, and we also have peoples. If we speak about uh, one people from mm -hmm. uh, Uruguay and okay. the other people from Brazil, we have the people, the different peoples yes. from the different countries. That is a good example of something that we're going to talk about at the end. When when can we take a noun that's already plural or that's not a plural is a pluralized noun? It's a non-count noun. And when are we allowed to pluralize it? There are there are certain situations like that. We're we're emphasizing the difference in our two peoples, and that's a good example. I'm going to add that to the ones that we discuss at the end. Um, there are some English doesn't have a lot of okay. English has rules like every language, right? But English has lots of exceptions to the rules. We have lots of exceptions. And sometimes we just have like a general pattern. It's not a rule that applies for every situation, but you'll notice patterns when it comes to pluralizing. So, David, yes. what's, what do these words have in common? I'll give you three words. Okay. Type them here. <clears throat> How do we pluralize these words, and what's the pattern? Okay, there are... Both of three they are irregular. The first one is tooth, teeth, mm -hmm. foot, feet, and the last one I don't know what does it mean. Goose. Goose is an animal. It's a large bird. It looks like a duck, but it's bigger. Okay, goose. I I don't know. I I'm, I guess geese. Correct. Maybe. Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's what's the pattern? Sorry. What's what's the pattern? How were you able to guess that goose was geese? What, what what was the pattern you were following? What's happening to the to the word? I I, I didn't catch you, German side. Okay, you're doing it naturally. You you're already doing this, but I'm just looking uh, for in another. What's the rule? Uh, the rule. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember the rules. Uh, the, the regular people. I think it's just. Uh, you have just to change it. I mean, uh, there's no uh, rule for that. I mean, tooth, the pearl of tooth is teeth. Right. That's so it. All you're doing uh, is changing. Like a regular verb. Yeah, all you're doing is changing the vowels, right? I'm just looking for the general pattern here, right? We don't need to write it down, but we see we're changing the OO changes to EE. -E. Ah, okay. okay. So there, there, is a, there, there is a group of nouns here that you see a, you see a pattern. They're changing from double O to double E. Um, yeah. How about this? There's another pattern we could perceive here. Um, hi, Eric. Good to see you. Hello. Uh, good to see you, Eric. Nice to have you here. Thank you. So, Anderson, how do we pluralize those? Uh, life. Uh, lives. Mm -hmm. Wife. Wives. Knife. Knives. So you if you had to, to add a V uh, mm -hmm. in place of F and uh, add S, yes. Yeah. yeah, interesting, huh? So it's just a pattern to take note of, right? Some of those words that end in I, F, E, they, uh, they change. Um, and then there are some irregulars. What about these? You'll notice there's, a, there's another commonality with many of these things. Um, I'm going to add in some other ones that I found. Um, what was the other one? Ah, here's another one. What do you think, Ken? Okay. What's What's the pattern here? I think How do it's the same. Deer, sheep, fish, bison, elk. Yeah. Maybe the same. Singer, it's exactly course, the same, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And what do, what do you notice about the fact that they all they all don't change? What do you know? What else do these things have in common? Kind of 
you know, if I uh, make this, uh, this this noun to plural, maybe I need to aid before the noun, like school of fish. Mm -hmm. And I don't know other animals, but well, pride of lion. Okay. Lion. Yeah, yeah, maybe I need to aid that, such words. Yeah, that's true. If you wanted Flock to describe the group. Mm -hmm. Flock of bird. Flock of birds. Yeah. Actually, somewhere I, somewhere in my archives, I have a list of about 30 of these in English. It's pretty funny. The official term for a group, like a, a pride of lions, a gaggle of geese. It's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. um, but on a simpler level, without talking about the the way that we term these, you notice all these five words, they are all what? Mm, kind of uncountable? You maybe. Yeah, Ancient, I'm, no. ancient animals. Yeah, they're animals. And, but and they are also ancient. I mean, by ancient, I mean uh, in culture, they had been with humans for a long, long term. Oh, okay. Well, but yeah, I don't know about fish. Fish are everywhere. <laughs> no, but for a long, long term. Okay. They have been with us for a long, long while. Oh, ancient, ancient, okay. Ancient, sorry ancient. the branches. Yeah, I, I misheard you. I thought you said Asian. <laughs> yeah, I understand Asian as well. As <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That's a good observation. So for some reason, especially when it comes to um, animals that are, are herded or animals that are tend to be in herds, uh, English has viewed them as like a collective. There's, you know, elk, there's some bison, there's some sheep, there's some deer. I'm not sure about the fish, why that's in the group, but that's an observation as far as, uh, if it's a herd animal, it's it's a good chance that it's not going to be pluralized, but the exception is goat. Goat, you become it becomes goats, right? Horse, we have horses. So again, there's exceptions to this general pattern that we, we observe a pattern, but there's always exceptions to it. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy, but in general, uh, when you uh, talk about animals, you don't need to to change the plural. Uh, a lot of them you do, but with these you don't. Okay. For, for instance, what about dog and cat? Right. Dogs, right cats, horses. Yeah. Horses. So I, I think sometimes some of with livestock, livestock animals, sometimes. For whatever reason, English has evolved to the point where they don't use a, a an S. Okay, um, so let's see. Those are the those are the uh, the pluralized ones. Um, let's discuss the quantifiers that we can put in front of things. What when do we use many and when do we use much? Can anyone tell me the the rule on this? There is a rule. <laughs> many for countable and much for uncountable noun. Yes, yes, everybody heard that, right? Yeah. So if you can count it, then it requires many. So for instance, um, give me a sentence, uh, Cecilia, with, hmm, give me a sentence with, oh, I don't know, knives. There are uh, many knives on my table. Yeah, many knives, right? However, uh, Anderson, can you give me a sentence with, um, oh, I don't know, oxygen and a quantifier? Uh, I don't have so much oxygen in the moon, <laughs> at the moon, <laughs> on the moon. Oh, on the moon, okay. On the moon. So there isn't, there isn't, there isn't much, right? There isn't much. Yeah, but the correct word is much. You, you chose the right word. Much, much oxygen. You can't say many oxygen because it's not countable. That's the basic the basic rule. Many versus much. Uh, of course, there are other ways to quantify things. Instead of many or much, we also can say what else to indicate in abundance. Quite uh, in abundance, uh, lots of. Lots of, a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the good thing about those particular words is it doesn't matter. There's no rule. You, you don't have to remember, oh, is this a countable or a non-countable. After a while, you get used to the sound, right, where it just sounds right. And you say, oh, <laughs> many. Sounds right. Yeah, it, so it sounds correct, you know, <laughs> just like you do in your native tongue. You say, I can't say much. Um, I can't say many oxygen because it just sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> But when it comes to a lot or lots of, uh, 
there's no rule there. You can put that in front of anything that you want, right? You can have lots of oxygen, you can have lots of fish, lots of knives, no rule. Okay. Um, what, what happens when I say too many or too much? What does that actually mean? Or what's the connotation? More than enough. Right, more than enough. So in what type of sentences would I use the expression there is too much of something or there is I have too many? Let like me when you are full. Go ahead, David. Sorry. Uh, I say when you are like full, like uh, this... Uh, yeah, this lake is full. Is uh, no, in this lake we got too many fish. Yes, good. Too many fish. That? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, I just finished eating at the restaurant. I went to the all-you-can-eat buffet, and I said, Ah, what did I just do? I ate too much. Too much. Yeah. So, the thing that those two sentences have in common are they negative or positive connotations? Negative. Negative. What sometimes happens to people learning English is they misuse the expression too many. I hear, I hear it quite frequently, especially when someone's new. They'll say, oh, I have too many friends. But what do they really mean? <laughs> They've got a Come lot over. of friends. I have a lot of friends. Or someone says, oh, I would like to have too much money. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, would, you would like to have a lot of money or you would like to have much money. <laughs> But not too much. Too much. So just be careful with the, the adding the two onto the front of those two words. Okay. Um, also, what if you had to define for someone who was basic in English? When we say some, some is kind of neutral, right? So too many, too much is negative. Um, we could probably come up with some terms that mean something positive, like you know, much and many just means that there's an abundance. Some is kind of in the middle. It's pretty vague. Some is one of those words that I say it doesn't work too hard because it doesn't tell us a lot. <laughs> For instance, if I say, uh, oh, I've got some money. How much money do I have? You don't know, right? Because I haven't given you very much information. Some is kind of a, it's not a very helpful word. Um, I caught some fish. Okay, well, how much, how many fish did you catch? <laughs> All right. Uh, also, the word any. How do we use the word any, um, Anderson? Any. Um, Can you use it in a sentence? Um, I don't have any, any money. Yeah. So you instinctively made a negative sentence because that's the, the idea of any, that... It's usually used in negative sentences, right? However, if you ask a question, you could ask someone, have you seen any movies lately? Right? Um, and how can you use any in a request, like a polite request? What do you think, uh, Ken? Can we use any to make a request of someone? Okay. Uh, can, I have, um, can I have some tea? Can I have any tea? That work. Uh, Mm -hmm. Would you mind if I if I can get any tea? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You could. Yeah. May I have? Yeah. Um, do you have any tea? Or you can also offer services to someone else, right? Like mm -hmm. David, you work in the service industry. You said a hotel, right? Yeah. So if a customer comes up and there he there he is, and what's one of the first things you might ask him? So the first thing I'm gonna say when I when I meet a customer, it's like, hello, welcome, and maybe after that, would you like to have a seat, or maybe would you like to have any couples something, or yeah. always polite, polite, always polite, you know. Sure. So any is a word that we use in polite requests or polite offers. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then and this is the point that Cecilia mentioned earlier. There are some situations where we do pluralize words that normally we do not pluralize, right? We don't pluralize... Um, uh, oxygen because it's a substance. We don't pluralize intelligence. We don't pluralize ideas like, oh, I have I have three intelligences. Um, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. However, when, when we are going to emphasize that we have two of something, two groups of something, there are, in English, we are allowed to pluralize. For instance, Cecilia, what was the example you gave us earlier? 
that we speak about Uruguayan people, meaning the group of uh, um, people living in Uruguay. And on the other hand, we speak about the group of people living in Brazil. So we can say the uh, Uruguayan people and Brazilian people. So we speak about <laughs> uh, U Uruguay and Brazilian peoples. Yeah. We might say our two peoples are becoming more united. Right? Our two peoples. And that's allowed because we're emphasizing that we have two distinct races here, so to speak. And we can do the same thing with simpler things. For instance, um, Ken, what type of a noun normally is coffee? Now, coffee. Yeah, is it no countable more, yeah. or not? Oh, uh, maybe I a cup of coffee, so it should be uncountable. Yeah. yeah. Normally, we say, for instance, uh, in Nicaragua they grow coffee. It's mm -hmm. it's a non-countable noun, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a substance, coffee. Mm -hmm. However, in the modern world of cafes. You are not, you, when you go in, it's true, you should ask for, I would like uh, two cups of coffee. That's the traditional way, but nowadays, what are we allowed to do? Maybe I have two coffees. Yeah, yeah. I would like three coffees. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. David? People say yeah, that. Yeah, it's right, it's right. Yeah, I like three coffees. Um, what, what do people do now with water? Uh, with water, it's the same thing. Can I, you can say like, can I have two cups, two glasses of water? Mm -hmm. Or, uh, uh, yeah, water is uncountable, so we can't say water, so. Or but it's, people it's, do it. Sounds, it. We, yeah, that people would do it sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so it's become so common that it's, it's recognized that, okay, yeah, it's not a countable noun, but we do it anyway, <clears throat> and it's understood what they mean. I would like three waters. <laughs> but is that a mistake or uh, no, is that a mistake? No, it's, 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 it's allowed now. Uh, it's allowed. Okay. Yeah, it's allowed. Uh, for instance, what about um, what about the word harm? So harm is a verb, right? But we can also talk about um, smoking can cause harm. So now it's a noun. Okay. Yeah. We we don't normally pluralize it, but if you were discussing a scientific paper discussing all of the different ways that smoking can harm the body, you might read expressions such as. Um, this paper is on the many harms of smoking. So they pluralize harm into harms. Or the, the example I like is um, uh, plastic. I like the example of plastic. Normally, do we normally we don't pluralize plastic, right? We say, man, this um, there's a lot of plastic in this car. This whole car is plastic. It's not like the old days when cars were made of metal. However, if you go to a factory. And let's say they produce different types of plastic. They may say in their in their manual, in this particular company, we manufacture 160 different plastics. Okay. So it's understood they're talking about types of plastic. So specific situations, there are some allowances for that type of thing, but it's not the norm. Okay. Um. Whew, it's getting late. I have an article. <laughs> It's a short article, though. Maybe you'll enjoy taking a look at it here. <clears throat> Go ahead and open that link, everybody. I'll give you a second. Uh, Jeremy, what is caterpillars? Caterpillar is, is the little worm-like animal that turns into a butterfly. Uh, all right. What do you call that in, uh, in, port in Portuguese? Uh, a, a kind of butterfly, caterpillars. No, it's the animal that turns into the butterfly, the one that uh, metamorphoses, you know? In Espanol, es un uh, urruga, no? No, in, in, yes, the metaphor, the metamorphosis is a uh, urruga, but the worm is un cien pies. Oh, cien pies. You've got in a picture. You've got a picture in the in the article. Um, that's not a centipede, though. That's that's not a centipede. No. No. Uh, Anderson, you've got a picture in the article. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You got a picture there. Oh, anyway, yes. this is uh, these are African caterpillars. So uh, 
probably they are different than the ones I'm familiar with anyway. Let's take a look at it and see why they eat them. <laughs> there we go. The title is Caterpillars, Dish of Choice for Central Africans. And it says here, uh, if I had the choice, I'd only eat that, added the young man as he waited for a flight in Bangui Airport to his home abroad where he can't even dream of finding his favorite dish. Uh, Eve's passion for this insect, known locally as Makongos, is shared among his countrymen who flock to buy caterpillars at the capital's markets near the popular intersection known as KM5. Okay, how about um, David, you want to read a paragraph for me? Yeah. Next paragraph? Uh, yeah. Because now it's not the season, you can buy a 5 liter, 5 quart, box of 3,000 or 3,500 CFA francs, about 5 euros, nearly $7, 1,000 CFA francs, more than when they are in season, say Pepe de and the Jopona, I said, would say smoky caterpillars with black heads, uh, her, her Stole. Stole. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what, sorry, Cecilia. Jeremy. Yes. What does it mean, stale? Stole. The last word. On stall, is, stall is in a market, in a large outdoor market. Each person has their, their location where they're supposed to be. Uh, it's like when you go into a bathroom or a restroom, each one of those is called a stall. So it's, um, it usually is surrounded on one side. So her location is her stall. All right. Okay, thank you. Cecilia, you want to read to the, to the break? Yes, people are buying lots, she added, for 2,300 CFA francs, 3.5 euros. She just cleared her stocks of specially seasoned caterpillars mi mixed in bags of sesame and Man manioc plants. Receipt for caterpillars are vast. Mm -hmm. Okay, recipes, recipes. Yeah. Recipes, sorry. Uh, Anderson, next uh, paragraph. Uh, recipes for caterpillars are vast. According to Anjapona, you can eat them fresh with a sort of peanut satay sauce, grilled on skewers or wrapped in uh, leaves and roasted. Okay, one more. When they are dry, you you pluck out the hairs and gently hydrate them by putting them in boiling water before cooking them in a sauce, she added. Okay, uh, Ken. Okay, uh, nutri uh, nutritionists say they, they are particularly rich in protein and can help ease food shortage in the Central African Republic, a poor country wrecked by British political insecurity and struggling to exploit its uh, enormous water, forest, and mi mining resources. Okay. Nearly 85% of participants from Central African Republic said in a 2004 United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization survey that they eat caterpillars. The report said for every 100 grams of dried caterpillars, there are about 53 grams of protein, about 15% of fat, and about 17% of carbohydrates. The insects are also believed to have a higher proportion of protein and fat than beef and fish with a high energy value, it added. Caterpillars are not considered an emergency food, but are an integral part of the diet in many regions according to seasonal availability. They are consumed as a delicacy, said FAO forestry expert Paul Vantum in the study. Outside the nutritional benefits, Makongos are seen as a good source of income for many residents, notably for women since they require little input and can be gathered by hand. During caterpillar season between May to June and September to October, inhabitants scour the forest, notably in the southwestern Lobaye region, for the insects to sell at the local market. Ah, they are much better than meat, much more nourishing, said a smiling client at Onjapona's stand. All right, so some questions. Let's eat caterpillars. Yeah, let's eat them. <laughs> let's try them out. <clears throat> so um, what are Mokongos? Start with a basic question. 
What's a what's a Makongo? Makongo is kind the... of people uh, a trip. Anderson? It's a kind of people. It's a it's a trip. Tribe. Uh, no, no. The second paragraph. Is this is this caterpillar? Yes. Mm -hmm. The people call them Makongos. That, that's their word for caterpillar. Okay. So um. Let's see. Uh, how is business going for Pe Pe Perpetue on Japona, who sells smoked caterpillars? How is her business going right now? The the business uh, is going good because on the third part they say get the bucket three thousand or three thousand five hundred francs. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad. I mean, now the currency, of course, in the, in Africa is a little bit different for Europe or America. Okay. But I think it's not. It's not. It's not bad. Yeah. For them. Like yeah. Good. According to the fourth paragraph, how is how is she how is she qualifying her selling? Is she is she selling just a few at a time? People are buying a lot. The edit. There you go. Buying lots. So even she's using the. Uh, I don't know if she was speaking English or not to this interviewer, but there you go. They're buying lots. Uh, what about the word here, stock? She says she just cleared her stock of specially seasoned caterpillars. What does that mean, stock? Kind of the, the uh, stuff, she prepared the stuff uh, which is except to sell. I mean, uh, in a can, can you give me a synonym for the word stock in this sentence? What could we substitute? What other word? Just to make sure we understand it. Okay. No, no. Mm. The, the woods that are kept to be sell. The caterpillars, you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you could say inventory. She just cleared her inventory. Yes, her inventory. Or her supply, yeah. So it's a it's a non count noun, huh? We can't pluralize it stocks. No. We really, well, we shouldn't okay. anyway. Not, not in this context. Okay. Um, what other word? Do I, I have another question for you. Um, how do nutritionists describe caterpillars? Uh, they are far more um, um, richer than. Beef and mm -hmm. fish, I think. Okay. I am Good. doing it by heart. In <laughs> nutrients, in nutrients, far, far richer in nutrients than fish and, and beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the belief. In fact, statistically, um, Anderson or Ken, what do we notice about? Um, the nutritional benefits of caterpillars, according to a study from the UN. Uh, it, it has a, a protein and and uh, carbohydrates. Mhm. Mm Good. It has a uh, 53 grams of proteins and about 15 percent of fat and about 70 percent of carbohydrates. Yeah. Notice that when we say percent, we say percent, not percents. Once in a percent. while, I hear I, you did it. You did it correctly. I'm not criticizing, but sometimes I hear students say 20 percent. They'll put an S on percent, but of course it isn't. It's percents. Oh, okay. Then. Yeah. Thank you. So, who wants to try caterpillars? You ready to try them? <laughs> oh, I prefer I prefer a fish or a, a chicken, <laughs> not caterpillars. <laughs> Cecilia. Uh, almost at the end of the of the article, it says there's a word uh, before the forests. S C O U R. I don't know the meaning of the word. Uh, scour. So it it can have a literal meaning and it can also have a figurative meaning. A literal meaning: a woman who is scrubbing a pot, she will scour it like this. She's cleaning it. She's scrubbing yes, it. Yes, I, I got it. I got it. Scrub. And, and of course, then the figurative meaning means to search vigorously through the forest because they're they're going to find every last caterpillar. So they're scouring the forest. They're cleaning the forest of caterpillars. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, let me put that article aside. 
Maybe we do a little bit more practice. Ooh, we're almost done. We had so much fun in the beginning of class. We're running out of time now. Okay. Um, let's see. We had a lot of practice already. Ah, how about I give you a? I'll give you a noun, and you make a sentence using a a quantifier. Okay. So if I talk to you, David, if I give you the noun uh, oil, petrol. Petrol. Yeah. Okay. Um, for my big car, I need a lot of petrol. Good. You can, you, you can say that? Yeah. Yeah. It for, takes a for lot. For refill. Can, okay, sorry. Can I say for refill my big car? It's bad, I think. Yeah. Or in order to fill. Or, it to, or in, in order to refill. In order to refill my big car. I need yeah. a lot of petrol. Good. Okay. How about um, Cecilia? Can you pretend that you are a uh, a waitress and you would like to offer the clients desserts? What might you ask them? Uh, would you like any uh, special tea uh, for dessert? Okay. Very good. So any any is the key word there. Um, <laughs> how about, can you make a sentence with, um, oh, let's see, ah, how about books, Anderson, give me a sentence with books in it, um, with a quantifier. I, I, I read some books yesterday. Okay, I read some books. Um, how about in the Library of Congress, which has, I think, more than a million volumes? How would you describe that, Ken? Okay, there are many books in the library. Yeah, so we have many. We have we have much. Uh, I don't think you guys have a problem with any of these. This is good. And um, if I want to ask for um, normally, if I want to ask for fruit, you know, I have a banana. I might say I would I would like two. Uh, how can you ask for? How would you ask for two? Uh, you could say two bananas, right? But how do we describe fruit in English? We also will put term uh, other terms in front of it. Couple. Yeah. Cu a couple can of I bananas. Have a couple of we'll also say pieces of fruit. We'll say things pieces. like that. Yeah, two pieces of fruit. Um, and when when might when might we be able to say fruits? Because normally fruit is already just a non-countable noun. But when might we say fruits? When we got a lot of different fruits, like bananas, blueberries, raspberry, all together, and we say like, "Can I have a pieces of these fruits?" Can I say that? Yeah, and then you could also say if you want to go back to your example, a lot of you're on the right track. A lot of different fruits. You could say in this particular market, they sell many fruits. All right. Okay. Right? Or they yeah. they sell twenty different fruits here. So that follows the example that Cecilia gave us with peoples, two peoples. Yeah. Our that one is a, what was a was a good example because uh, uh, I haven't I don't know this this kind of uh, you know with the people when she say good job yeah. Cecilia. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the class. Um, Yes, we did. I got a little bit behind schedule, so I'm out of time on this class. I got to start my next one. If you're interested, come join me over there. Thank you. Okay, okay Jerry. Thank you for the class. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, Jerry. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.